this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome to those joining us on Facebook this morning. We're going to celebrate Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we worship and honor you. Lord, we magnify your name. God, you're so good. We honor and glorify you, Jesus. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you. We honor you today. Come on, lift your voice and begin to magnify him. We celebrate you, Jesus, today. We're so thankful, Lord, for your love, your grace, your mercy. God, that you loved us so much, you gave the greatest gift of all, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we worship and magnify you, Lord. We glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Father, we worship you. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's sing this heart the herald angels sing. Heart the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful. I'm gonna 
Worship the Lord. We worship your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise your name forever. We come to adore you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come let us adore.
this Christmas season because of Jesus. You know, John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Where do you think giving of gifts came from? You know, he gave the greatest gift of all, and we can be encouraged today, even though that was 2,000 years ago, We can be encouraged today because of the gift of Jesus that no matter what it is we're facing, he has a way of escape. All because he was born. And, you know, this is, we should remember this every day. But, you know, it's Christmas and, you know, we're celebrating. We've got the trees and the decorations. But we always, from the time my kids were little, even till now, we do this. Before we open gifts, we say, why are we opening these gifts? We wouldn't be opening these gifts if it weren't for the greatest gift of all. You know, because of him, we get to open gifts. So as we open these gifts, let's remember what he did for us. For the price that he paid. And that our hope is in him. Thank God. <laughs> that our hope's not in our government. Yeah. You know, in in people, because they're going to let us down. But God will never let us down. And we can be encouraged today knowing that he's faithful and that with him all things are possible. That no matter what it looks like for me today, if I'll focus my attention upon him and put him first, he'll give me the wisdom that I need to get out of the situation that I'm in. Hallelujah. And to me, that gives me hope. That's something to celebrate. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We're so thankful. We're so thankful for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, you're good. You're good. Can I have the socks? We're going to pray. We've mentioned this uh, with the outreach going into uh, the COVID Patience, we're going to pray over these socks today. Amen. You know, in the book of Acts, they 
prayed over cloths and they sent it to the sick and so we're going to do that some of you that are up close ginger lori you guys i want you to lay your hands on this everybody else stretch your hands out towards these socks father we come to you in the name of jesus lord we thank you and praise you father that there's no distance in prayer and we lay our hands upon these socks right now and we declare and decree the healing power of God to flow into <laughs> the people, God, that are going to receive these socks. Father, that when they, they touch these socks, that the anointing of God is transferred to them. And it drives out sickness and disease and viruses. That, Father, lungs are made whole. Pneumonia has to go. COVID-19 virus has to go. In the name of Jesus comes in contact with the power of God. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it today that each and every person that these go to, God, that they're blessed, that they recover. We declare the life of God to flow into them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because of the greatest gift of all, Jesus, because of him being made flesh and coming to this earth and dying on the cross for us. We can be healed, and these people can be healed in the name that's above every name. Father, we thank you, and we praise you for it. We call it done in Jesus' name. And, Father, for every nurse, every staff member, every person that receives a gift from us at Carl, Lord, we pray that you would minister to their hearts that they would be touched, that they would be strengthened, that they would be encouraged this Christmas season. Lord, that this just little act of kindness would give them hope. And Lord, that they would sense your love. And Lord, that if they don't know you, that they would see their need for you. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. And at this time, can you stay up here with me? I'd like to ask Chabuzo, would you come forward? Many of you, I know you've seen him. If you haven't met him, he's been here with us. He's been in a program at the University of Illinois. And this is his last Sunday here, which I'm super sad about it. We're going to miss him. I love the way you worship, brother. And um, he is actually, are you officially a doctor yet? Not yet, but he's going, he'll be doing his residency back in Georgia where he's at and going to be doctor. Uh, he's going to be a family practice doctor. And so how cool is that? This man, he knows the word. And what I like, I told him this a couple weeks ago, Pastor Hagen always says the natural and the supernatural coming together make an explosive force for God. And so when he treats his patients, he can do what he can naturally, but he's got a power source on the inside that those things coming together can make a difference in your patients. And would you just take a minute and greet the people? Would you do that for me? I'm putting you on the spot, but you know you're going to have to talk to people all the time because you're a doctor, right? Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. I don't know what to say. Just... I'm overwhelmed whenever it comes to praising God. So um, you guys bear with me. It's not, uh, I do it on my own. When I pray, um, <laughs> you know, people, I mean, when I pray privately, I worship God. Because I imagine myself being in the presence of God at the end of all these things, at the end of everything, all of us, everybody, billions of people all over the world be thanking God and praising God together. And Christ being the head of the church. So even when I'm here raising my hands up, I, just, I don't feel, I feel like getting a wall to block me so that people will not see me and I'll be on my own praising God. But I feel so great having other people raising their hands up, praising God and worshiping him. That's a brother here. I didn't see him today. He motivates me so much. I didn't see him today, but telling you, it's, it's a wonderful thing. When you talk, I'm sorry I'm taking off your time. Um, you guys can get my accent too. The idea is, when it comes to praising God and worshiping Him, things, it's a different word all over for me. 
So that's why with all these things going on, I don't want to start going through it. But when the truth comes out, people will know. So when the truth comes out, people will know. But God knows. And we are here to praise God. Never you please give up on praising God. Don't let whatever is going on now to distract you from praising God. Because after this, Jesus is still there. Yeah. This did not come as a surprise to God. Yeah. It came as a surprise to, to people who don't know God. That's why I don't watch news. I don't listen to news. I'm sorry. People will be asking me why. Because all the news I want, I've seen it in the Bible. All the news I want, I've seen it in the Bible. Nothing is still new to me. When I look at the Bible, I see the news. Uh -huh. Sometimes I leave. I, I, I don't think, I don't know the last time I've seen how many months I've seen TV. Talk less of opening it. If I have the time, I will, I will open up the Bible. I mean, there's nothing that trace me like in lady reading the Bible. Look, open it and looking at it. Every word there means so much for me. So even when talking to patient or talking to anybody, I just let them know that you can live this life without sickness or any disease. I've put it into practice, and I've seen it. I've never taken Tylenol. I'm not telling you to do so if you don't believe God. Because I believe every, every piece of word in that book, and it ministered to me. So please, brothers and sisters, there's nothing as good as worshiping God. I mean, there's, that, that trumps everything you want to think about. To praise God, to worship him. To praise God, to worship him. I was here about how many years ago, someplace here in, in Champaign. I was going to church there. Happened to be the only one who raises my hands up. At a point, they come and ask me, uh, uh, we are getting closer there. How do you raise your hand up? Um, you, we like to raise our hands, but we, we have not been there. I try to imagine, if somebody pointed a gun on your face and asked you to raise your hand up, what are you going to do? I mean, you don't have to go to any place to raise your hands up. But praise God, who made you to jump up, to stand on your feet? How many people wish to stand on their feet every day, but they could not? When you go to hospital, when you go to rehab, you go to any place, you see people who are wishing for one day to take one single breath. Just one breath. But God gives, you know, gives us, do you know how many breaths you take in a day? In a 24-hour day. Free of charge. You didn't pay for it. You go to the bathroom, you pee, you never pay for dialysis. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Stretch your hands out towards him. Father God, we thank you. And we praise you for Chabuzo. Father, we thank you that his steps are ordered of the Lord. That everything he sets his hand to prospers. It su succeeds. It excels. And Father, as he goes to do his residency and then the other tests that he has to do to, to get his actual certification. Father, we thank you that he has the mind of Christ. He's anointed by God, by you, to be a doctor, to be a physician. And Father, we declare and decree that he'll fulfill everything that you have for him, that he'll run his race in full, that you protect him, that he and his family are blessed, that they're led by the Spirit of God and you supply their every need. Father, we thank you for the anointing of God upon his life and the blessing that he has been to us while he's here. Father, the joy that he has that overflows to people that he's around. Father, we are so grateful, so thankful for it. And Father, we declare just the blessing of God upon him and his family and his coming and his, and his going. He's blessed in the city, in the fields, in his storehouse and everything that he sets his hand to. It excels, it increases, and it prospers. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We're going to miss you. Praise the Lord. Well, turn around, wave at somebody, let them know you're glad to see them, and then you may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome this morning to Midwest Believers Church. We are glad that you are here. Welcome to those joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Pray that your week is blessed this week. 
And um, just a few quick announcements. Tomorrow, if anybody is available, we will be putting together all of the little gifts that we're taking to Carl Hospital. Uh, we'll be doing that at 1030 here at the church. And so um, if you want to come out and help us with that, we'd appreciate it. We're doing 100 uh, little gifts for the staff on the COVID floor and then 60 of the bags excuse me, holiday cheer bags for the patients. And so that'll take us a little time to put it together. So many hands make the work light. And so if you can come and help us, it, plus it's a good time of fellowship too. So uh, 1030 tomorrow, we'll be doing that. And then just a couple of quick reminders, uh, no prayer meeting tomorrow here at the church or Wednesday night service. Uh, we'll be celebrating the holidays, pray from home. Amen. And I think, I think that's it. Praise the Lord. Now, at the end of the service, we'll be taking communion, and it's going to be a little bit different uh, today than uh, we normally do. The ushers will be handing it to you, but these are prepackaged uh, communion cups, and so you have to peel off the top to get to the juice, and then you have to peel off another little layer to get the little wafer on top. So just a heads up when you get ready to take communion. We're gonna, isn't it going to be good to take communion again? We haven't been able to do that because of all the COVID stuff. So praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jabuzo, you got me kind of fired up there, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need an offering envelope, slip your hand up in the air. Oh, God is good. Somebody say he's good. <clears throat> Amen. Every breath we have. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You, know, you start to talk about, about that. You know, it kind of... All that because of Jesus. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. We celebrate... Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Let's pray over this offering. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the opportunity that we have to give this morning to bring our tithes and offerings to you. Lord, you're the one that we look to. Lord, we depend upon you. You are faithful and you are always true. And Lord, we just declare your blessing over each and every person that is in this room. Your blessing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Amen. Amen. Let's give this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody say, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just take a minute. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. And we praise you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, every day we experience your goodness. When we uh, get up from bed, Lord, we experience your goodness. Lord, all through the day we experience your goodness and your graciousness and your mercies. And Lord, when we go to bed at night, we thank you. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the breath that we breathe. We thank you, Lord, we can move around and stand up. And, Lord, we can uh, walk around and we give you thanks and we give you praise. Lord, it's all blessing from you. And we don't take it for granted, but, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We give you praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Somebody say the Lord is good. Oh, he's so good. He's so faithful. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, to Luke chapter 2. Amen. <clears throat> Luke chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 9. Praise the Lord. How many know the Lord is good? He's always good, and he's always faithful. Amen. Amen. He's never not faithful. He's always good. Even through all this, the COVID and different things, even through all that, he's faithful. And his words never changed. And 
you know, we've been talking about purpose for the last several weeks, and, and uh, I don't know, we may continue on that in that vein, but his purpose hasn't changed. His plan has not changed. He is always the same. Amen. You know, the Bible says there's not even a shadow. You know, um, I don't know, because of the lights, there's not, not a shadow here, but, the, you know, there's a shadow from the chairs, and there's a shadow from from me. I can look back and see my shadow. That's not the real me. That's not even the real me. You know, you wouldn't come up and you wouldn't walk up and say and start shaking hands with my shadow and say, it's good to meet you. It's good to see you. No, you, you want to see the real person, right? And the Bible says there's not even a shadow of turning, not even a shadow of change. I'm not, not, not even the real thing. There's not even a shadow of change. There's not a hint of of change with the Lord. If he was faithful back then, he's faithful now. Amen. Amen. If he's good back then, he's good now. Amen. And the scripture says over in Acts that he went about doing good. Doing good. If he was going about doing good, then he's about doing good now. Amen. Amen. Right now. Somebody say right now. Right now. Oh, he's so good and so faithful. Amen. And so Luke chapter 2 <clears throat> I want to talk this morning just for a few minutes of just a few things that we can, we can learn from, uh, uh, from the manger, if you will. Amen. Lessons from the manger. Verse 9, Luke chapter 2, verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came down upon, or came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel of the Lord, first thing he addressed with them, was fear. Whew, I just want to make a point of that. The first thing that he addressed with them was fear. Because the angel of the Lord came and the glory of the Lord was around them and they were afraid. And the first thing, you know, the first thing out of his mouth could have been, howdy. You know, it could have been anything, but the first thing out of his mouth was fear not. You know what? No matter what we face, no matter what we're going through, the first thing out of the Lord's mouth is fear not. Amen. You know, with a little baby, you hold that little baby and the little baby's crying and you just want to know know everything's going to be all right. Before the bottle comes, before anything else comes, it's just, it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You know, the girls, when they were younger and storms, they would... Uh, this happened, you know, when they were younger, but storms would be blowing outside or whatever, and they'd run in. And as soon as they got into our bed, they just felt like everything was going to be all right. Now, was our bed really any safer than their bed? No, but they felt that it, it was. And, you know, the first thing the Lord deals with in this case is fear. So I want to encourage you, make 2021, as we go into 2021, a year of no fear. Amen. Amen. A year of no fear. Just like uh, Lexa, when Rhonda was telling a couple weeks ago, little Lexa was riding her bike. Rich and Tracy Griffith's uh, younger daughter, she's not so small anymore, but she was learning to ride a bike and she was going, she was uh, across the street from our house and you could hear her going, no fear here, no fear here. What had she been learning in children's class about no fear? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know, you don't have to be riding down, there's Lexa, you don't have to be riding down the road on your bike to say no fear. We can go through our day saying, I refuse to fear. Yes, I refuse to fear. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that he dealt with that immediately with the shepherds. He dealt with that immediately. And the angel of the Lord, and so, and they were uh, sore afraid, verse 10, and the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. Somebody say good tidings. Good tidings. You know, we don't say tidings, at least I don't anymore, and uh, you probably don't either, but news. Somebody say news. 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 Good news. Good news. I bring you good news of great joy. Somebody say good news. Good news. Now, that's not going to be on Channel 3 or Channel 20, or CBS, or ABC, or NBC, the good, good news, but it is in the Word of God, good news. 
That's what Chabuza was talking about. Good news. Amen. Any news, any news that's really important, any news, find it in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. That's the truth. Absolute truth. Amen. Good news of great joy and shall be to all people. Somebody say <coughs> all people. You don't have to cough, but uh, all people, all people. I'm so glad that the good news wasn't just for a select few. Amen. The good news is for all. Amen. 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 I remember there was a friend of mine that, uh, I consider him a friend. I haven't talked with him for a long time, but I had met him at Robinson Correctional Center. And he had been in, I, at that time, maybe 15 years or whatever, and we were sitting at lunch one day. I would do a service, afternoon service, we would eat lunch, and then I would do an evening service. And uh, we were sitting at lunch one day talking, and he was sitting right across from me, and he says, you want to know why I'm here? I said, not really. <laughs> not really. And he, and he proceeded to tell me why he was there. And it was first degree murder. And he said, but you know, he said, I was in Menard, and I was by myself. I, <clears throat> I was isolated. And he said, I was in Menard, and all I had was a Bible. And I began to read this Bible. And he said, I cried out to the Lord, Lord, if you're real, you know, show me, teach me. And all people, all, even if someone, no matter what their history is, that's why we can't, we can't just say, well, they're definitely not going to heaven. No, 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 wait a second. You forget about the mercy of the Lord and the faithfulness Amen. of God. Amen. 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 And so all people, all people, salvation is not for a select few. That's right. It's not for us just to be religious and come into church and come in. We used to wear a tie and come in and pull up our tie and talk with a spiritual religious voice. No, it's for all people. For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. Amen. Amen. That's good news. Amen. That's good news. I mean, it's good news to me. It's good news of my salvation because I know my past. Anybody, anybody else have a past? Anybody in the room have a past? Anyway, we all, everybody has a, has a past and has some things. You know, there's... You know, people talk about skeletons in the closet. You know, I probably everybody has skeletons, some things that we just don't prefer not to talk about. Amen? But God knows those, and he still loves us. Oh, man, he is so good and so faithful. Amen. Amen. And so, good tidings to all people. Good news to all people. Good news to all people. Doesn't matter what your background is. It's good news. Amen. Listen, had somebody talk to me the other day. We talked for about an hour. I'm like, oh, are you trying to get me to say that God doesn't love you? No, he loves you. I would have to go against the word of God. To, no, no, no. God is good. And he loves you and he's so merciful. Man, if you, if we knowing, if we being evil or carnal or natural, Know how to give good gifts to our kids and to be a blessing. We want to see our kids blessed. Yeah. How much more our Heavenly Father? Right. How much more does He know how to love us? Does He care about us even with our past, whatever it may be? He loves us. Yeah. Amen. And that's why Jesus came. <coughs> Verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. The sign. You know, a lot of people missed that sign. A lot of people missed because they were looking for Jesus prophesied as the king of kings. They were looking for him to come in reigning, but he came in as a baby. Came in as a baby. God is so good. Amen. 
You know, and he came in in such a way, such an ordinary way, that a lot of people missed the extraordinary uh, of who he was or who he is. They missed because it was so ordinary. It says here, and, he shall, and this shall be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. You know, a manger was just simply, a lot of times back then, the, the manger, uh, of course, that was where he laid, but the, but the barn was just a hollowed out place in the side of a hill with some rocks and not, not but Jesus came there. Jesus came there as a baby, as a baby. And so realize this, Jesus came. He was very much God, all God, all man. How's that happen? I don't know. We'll figure it out later at some point. But all God, very much God, all man, very man. It was totally ordinary. You know, his conception was the miracle, but it was born in such a natural way, such an ordinary way, people missed it. And can I just say this? We can miss, because of something being so ordinary, we can miss the extraordinary. We can miss the miraculous, because we're looking for something big. You know, we're looking for a big boom out of heaven or something, and we can miss and I want to go back to this for just a second. Spend some time here this morning. But, um, you know, I believe this year, 2021, is the time for the church to rise up. Yes. And I'm not talking about churches. Not, I'm not talking about steeples rising up. I'm talking about people yes. rising up. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about this building. Yes, we will continue to preach the word of God. Obviously, and we'll, we expect miracles, we expect the outpouring of God, but it's a time for the outpouring of God to happen through His people yes. and not limited to the walls of the church. Right. Amen. Amen. And so we can't miss what's ordinary because I know me. Do you all know you? Yeah. I, I know me, and I know how ordinary I am, how normal. Rhonda may not say I'm normal, but, but how normal I am. Why would God use me? There's nothing special about me. That's how I thought for years. I related a story in the early service about this man. His name was Earl, and he, uh, I worked with him. He was kind of my boss. And, uh, but he had, he had some health problems and had a problem with his foot, or his feet from diabetes. And I just really had him on my heart. Man, I was stirred up about it. And I was like, man, and I was 16, 17 years old, and I was like, Earl. I went over to his house early one morning before I went to school, and so it was about 7 o'clock, and I said, Earl, I said, God wants to heal you. And man, I was so stirred about that. I was almost, almost in tears. You wouldn't believe that, would you? That I would ever be in tears. But I was almost in tears. Because Earl was going through this, he wasn't even born again, but I just, my heart just poured out to him. And so I went to his house and I said, Earl, you've got to come to church with me tonight. I said, there's a man that's anointed, he's a, he's a healer, and the Lord will heal through this man, will heal you, I believe he'll heal you. You know what, he didn't come to church, and he didn't receive his healing. And I tell you this because I thought, in my own thinking, that I had to wait for this special, for this person. And this person was anointed by God. And many people did receive healing. But I felt like in my own thinking that I had to wait. And you know what I missed out? On God using me. I missed out because I thought, Trent, you're so ordinary. You're not even cool. I mean, that person's cool. That person's cool. That person has cool hair. And... I would just like to have hair now. But, <laughs> but cool hair would be, it takes it to another level, right? And so, but anyway, I, was, I, I felt like I, I was so ordinary that God couldn't use me. 
and I missed an opportunity. And I missed an opportunity for God to flow through me and work through me. And that man missed an opportunity to, to experience the healing power of God. All because I missed the, ex, the ordinary because I was so focused on something being so extraordinary. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. Don't miss what seems so natural. You say, well, that couldn't be God. Oh, no, no, no. You go ahead and stretch your hands out and pray for them. You go ahead and be an encouragement to them. You go ahead. Let God work through you. Amen. Amen. Gone are the days of just waiting from church service to church service. We're not supposed to be from church service to church service church people. We're supposed to be every day, every day believers. Amen. Amen. Every day believers. And I believe God, as the church rises up and knowing who they are, I believe we'll see the things that were spoken of by Jesus whenever he said, it's better that I go away. It's better that I go away. Amen. Why? Because he'll work through me. He'll work through Bernie. He'll work through Ginger. With the people that, you know, people may not come in those doors. I believe they will continue to come through these doors. But they may not just show up through those doors. But you know where they're going to show up? At your work. They're going to show up at the store you go to. They're going to show up and you're going to look around. And there's not going to be a big name preacher. There's not going to be a, quote, a, a pastor. You know who's going to be there? You're going to be there. And you know who God will use to reach them? You, right there. You know who's anointed by God as much as anybody is anointed by God, empowered by God? You are. Yes. Amen. Amen. You are. Hallelujah. I want to encourage, I want to encourage you today. Man, this is that time. Yes. This is that time. I grew up talking, you know, well, in the last move of God, in the last days, you know what? Ding, ding, ding. Here we are. Yes. Here we are. We're right here. This is the time. Amen. This is the time. Amen. 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 So don't miss the ordinary. That's why so many people missed the ordinary of Jesus' birth. So ordinary. Well, that couldn't, that couldn't be God. That's, that's a baby. No, no, no. That's Jesus. A miracle of his conception. Amen. Amen. So don't let the ordinary rob you of the extraordinary that God wants to do through your life. Amen. Amen. Don't let the ordinary it seems so simple. Don't let it rob you of what God has for your life. Amen. I mean, there's people for us to minister to. There's people for us to speak to, to encourage. And there's something on the inside of you that calls out to minister to people and calls out to help people. I remember friend of ours, you sing this song. Uh, you used to do a special. I want to spend my whole life mending broken people. Anybody remember that, that song? I want to spend my whole life. And that's so true. You know, as believers, we ought to have that on our heart. I want to spend my whole life mending broken people. Amen. I want to spend my whole life removing pain. Another verse that says, Lord, help these words. Heal the heart that hurts. You know, a lot of times the pain that people are going through, it's not a physical pain. It's a heart pain. And you know what you have? You have the healing power of God to mend broken hearts. Amen. 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 You know, nobody, uh, unless uh, some people on Facebook, they put their baggage out there. But most people, most people don't. And they'll hide it, and they'll hide it back just like that uh, medicine commercial or whatever with the face. Anybody ever seen that? Am I the only one who's seen it? But anyway, 
Yeah, and they're talking about they're talking about depression in that commercial, right? And so a lot of people are that way. And they'll smile on the outside, but there's a hurt on the inside. And the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you knows that hurt. He knows that hurt and he knows exactly. It may not be a pill to pop. It may not be a, a certain type of doctor or whatever, but just a touch from God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we're going. We're going there Amen. as a people. Rhonda and I are going there. You're going there. And it doesn't start tomorrow. It starts today. It starts today. Man, opportunities. I believe we, we uh, this really wasn't what I was planning on speaking, but anyway, we'll get there. But I believe we miss opportunities. This is a huge revelation to me. I believe we miss opportunities because something just seems so ordinary and so natural. You know, there's no goosebumps with it. There's no, whoo, you know, nobody's swinging their coat around. I did that one time. Man, it was a powerful service in, in, uh, in uh, it wasn't in Mexico, it was in uh, uh, Mauritius. And, uh, but there's nobody swinging their coat around or whatever, and nobody's going, you know, Pentecostal, running around the room or whatever. It just seems so normal. But yet, if we'll be sensitive to the Holy Spirit on the inside, what seems so normal, we can allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and we can do something that takes people out of their normal depression into joy. Amen. Takes people out of their hurting and out of their pain into the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Into peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I have to get back on this. Hey Amen. Let's, let's just read this, verse 12 again. And this shall be a sign unto you, and you, shall, and, and you shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. When Jesus came, they were looking for a king, but they didn't realize that he would come as a baby. Wrapped in swaddling clothes, he was helpless. He was helpless, like a newborn baby. But in years past, they, let, me, let me just read this. They were, the babies were wrapped in strips of cloth to protect them from the harsh elements. Usually, mothers would wrap the arms and legs separately and then wrap the torso until the baby looked like a mummy. This seems cruel, and it restricted the child's movements. But in a world with little medical care, where babies routine, routinely died before their first birthday, it was a way to provide a crude form of protection. So he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Man, these rags just wrapped around him as protection. You know, as believers, we walk in the protection that Jesus paid for on the cross. You know, we see that that's how he was born. And then he died. And the, the promise that we have, or the covenant that we have through Jesus, grants us protection from the harsh elements. And it seems like things get harsh and more harsh. And I was reading a book by my, by my pastor growing up, and this was from the 1980s. He was like, oh, and part of it, he was, uh, what he was talking about was talking about how bad things had gotten and how harsh things had gotten. I thought, man, those were the, like the good old days. You know, those were like, that was easy. Maybe it was because I didn't have bills back then. But that was like the easy days. That was super, you know. I was like, man, that was the 80s. You know, lots of hairspray and lots of colors. And, you know, that was, that was, that was awesome. But even when things have gotten so harsh and so rough. God is so good. Amen. And we walk in protection. Yes. Don't forget that. Even right now with this, uh, with the COVID stuff, 
Man, we walk in protection. And this is a foreshadowing of that protection that we walk and that we have today. Amen. That's why it's so, it's so important that every day we pray over ourselves and over our family and just thank you, Father, for protection. I thank you, Lord, that the angels of the Lord go before, behind, and beside me everywhere I go. And before and behind my, and beside my kids everywhere I go. I thank you, Lord, that when I'm out, I see every car when I'm driving, and they see me. Amen. Amen. Even, even if somebody honks at me. I had somebody honk at me the other day. Actually, somebody waved with one finger at me the other day. It was the nicest thing. They waved at me, but they only had one finger up. It was, it was kind of strange. But anyway, um, and they didn't look very nice. Their face, their face looked like they were angry. I don't know what was going on. But, you know, every car, it's a blessing. Even if I get honked at, man, it's a blessing because that car saw me. That's exactly what I prayed. I, I may not have seen that car, but they saw me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, bless them for their attitude. But, Lord, thank you for protecting me. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we walk in protection. Of, we walk in the protection of the Lord. You know, it's so important. Every building that I'm in, I thank you, Lord, is protected. Every building that I'm in, even the church building, I thank you, Lord, that that building's protected. I thank you, Lord, that the school buildings that the kids are in, are protected. Every store that we go in, everybody's going in stores right now. Every store that we go in is protected. No harm shall come near me. No harm shall come near my kids because we walk in protection. And this is a foreshadowing of that protection. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we look and we see the humility that he was born with. Man, he was born as a man. There's a scripture that says... Um, I believe it's over in uh, First or Second Corinthians. It says, "Though he was rich, he was made poor, that you through his poverty may also be rich." You know, he was God, and he became a man, and he stepped down. That was poverty. He wasn't impoverished. You know, it was really interesting because even as a baby, the Lord was providing for him. Remember, he sent, he sent the wise men, he sent them in with gold and frankincense and myrrh. It was very expensive. Brought that in. Even when he was a small child, he was still provided for. How much more? Man, how much more? God is your provider. Amen. And so Jesus was provided for. So his humility wasn't. Uh, financial, what we think, well, humble. You know, I heard one person talking about a traveling minister. Lord, you keep them humble, we'll keep them poor. You know, that's not, that's not humility. You know, someone who's rich financially could be very humble. Yeah. Amen. Humility is thinking of ourselves right. Humility is knowing these finances, that came from the Lord. Yes. And then come... You know, I've, I've messed up a hundred times, but God's always been faithful. Amen. Amen. Humility is not thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought, but it's also not thinking less of ourselves. We need to think just the way God thinks about us and see ourselves the way God sees us. Amen. And so Jesus was born, and he was humbled as a, uh, as a man, but he was provided for by God. Amen. This baby lying in an exposed stable, in a feeding trough. This baby was provided for by God. And foreshadowing of things, isn't it interesting, talked about this in the early service, but it's interesting that he was born in a feeding trough, a manger. The man who would feed the 5,000, feed the 7,000, who is the bread of life, would be born in a manger. Isn't it interesting how every little detail is important? Like you said, 
chapter years old, you said every word is so important. Every detail, and I've read these things and brush past them and move on because I want to get, but every detail, God foreordained for us, for our blessing. How much does he love us? How much does he care for us? Amen. And so we think about this. We think about the depths to which Christ stooped when he joined us, the human race, the disinterest of the world who had no room for him. Uh, the foreshadowing of Jesus on the cross when he was in that manger. And the simplicity of the gospel. You know, many, many, many people will look past the gospel because it's just too simple. It's too good to be true. You know what God is? Too good to be true. But you know what? He is true. <laughs> he is true. And he is faithful. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, if the world needed education, nothing against education, but if the world needed education, God would have sent just a teacher. If the world just needed an army, he would have sent a general. But the world needed a savior. So he sent a baby. Amen. Amen. And he would grow strong uh, in favor with God and man. He would grow strong. He would be an example for us. He would be an example for us of how we could get out there and be used of God. Amen. Amen. He was got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then he started doing miracles. You know, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive power. Yes. We receive power when we receive the Holy Spirit. And so uh, Jesus showed us how to get out there and get it done. Amen. Right, amen. And all we have to do is go ahead in that power, get out there and get it done. Amen. 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 Yeah, he was born as a baby, but he didn't go out just as a baby and just go out weak and insignificant. No, no, no. He went out the Savior of the world. Amen. Amen. And he's still the Savior of the world, faithful and true. Amen. And we can always depend on him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you and we give you praise for your goodness. We give you praise. Lord, I thank you that you sent Jesus. He was born in that stable, in that manger. And Lord, we recognize the goodness of God. We recognize the faithfulness of God. And Lord, we recognize the purpose. Jesus came. Jesus said, I have come to seek and save that which was lost. And Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for seeking us out, for saving us. Thank you for your goodness, and we remember your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to receive communion together this morning. And remember what Rhonda said about that. They'll, they'll hand the communion to you. Amen. And um, I'm going to grab one. Can you hand one to me? Amen. Thank you, brother. So these are a little different. And so there's a little top piece of plastic, I guess. And then in the bottom, there's the juice. So you just have to take it out. Once you get that, if you can take it out, and then we'll receive communion all together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you all see? All right. 
Amen. Hallelujah. I want to read this scripture and then we'll receive communion together. You know, today we celebrate the birth of Christ, but we also celebrate the resurrection of Christ today. Amen. And we remember, it's so important that we remember what the Lord has done for us through Jesus Christ. Because it's in that grace, it's in that peace that we walk. Uh, we walk in newness of life. And it doesn't come any other way but knowing who we are in Christ. Amen? And so the scripture says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Two things. We need to do it often, and we need to remember what Jesus did. It's important that we remember what he did. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to die on the cross for us. We thank you that his body was broken. His body was broken for our healing. We thank you for that. And we thank you, Jesus, that we have a, have a covenant with the Lord because of what you did on the cross. You took upon yourself all of our sickness and disease. You took upon yourself all of our sins. You took upon yourself poverty and lack that we might have life and that we might have it in abundance. And we thank you. We praise you, Jesus. So we take this now in remembrance of you. We can go ahead and take the cracker. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Lord, this juice represents the blood of Jesus. And because of the blood, we have protection. We have protection. We can have confidence in the fact that we live protected. And we thank you for that blood. And Lord, because of the blood of Jesus, we have been given access to the Father. We've been brought into the family of oh God. And we have access to the Father because of that blood. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. Lord, the blood of Jesus still cleanses. Lord, because of that blood, we still walk in health and strength. Because of that blood, we walk in peace and protection. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we remember it. Amen. Amen. Let's take it together. It will never lose its power. We'll sing together. For it reaches, for it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows. Amen. All 
altar care team, if you'd go ahead and come on up this morning. Hallelujah. You know, we don't want you to leave this place without prayer. If you, uh, if you have a need, maybe it's a physical need or, or emotional or whatever you have a need for, don't leave not having prayer. Amen. Amen. Come up and just receive prayer from these. They know how to pray. They'll hook up with you, agree with you in prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing, uh, close out with Silent Night in just a minute, but I just want to say Merry Christmas. And uh, I know this has been an interesting year, but you know what? We're coming through this thing. And you're here right now. And so praise God for that. Amen. Merry Christmas. And. Uh, Wishing you all, we know that the, the new year is going to be the best of new years. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Would you stand with us? Sing this Christmas carol with us and just think about Jesus, what he's done for us, and how grateful, how thankful we are for him. Amen? Here we go. Silent night. Silent night. for this time that we've had to gather together to celebrate you. Father, we remember in the midst of all the busyness and everything going on that you, Jesus, are the reason for this season and the reason that we celebrate every day, the reason we have life and health and strength. And Father, we declare the blessing of God upon each family, blessed in their coming, their going, in the city, the fields, everything they set their hand to is blessed, Father. We thank you and praise you for a wonderful Christmas season. And Father, we love you. We honor you. We're so grateful for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas.